In this video, I'm going to be drawing uh, the solution to question 21, um, 2021 HSC paper, question 24D. Uh, so there's a couple, of, there's a lot to go on here. This is a six mark question, and the year before had a, a, um, a large question as well. So uh, I've had students comment that they thought this was a fairly complicated question. So let's um, let's break it down. The first thing that we notice is, well, okay, it's point we should always consider scale. So the scale is one to one, which means we're going to draw it with the same size. Me, I'm doing a scale of five to one in order to fit on the whiteboard. The second thing is that they've already given us a lot of information on the following page with um, an a lot of the stuff already assembled. We've already got the shaft and the gear already drawn. Um, I want to point out this X. This X is the square component on the shaft. Um, so when we, whenever we have a flat, to effectively show that the, can, the, the center line, there's a center line running through this here to show that the center line is cylindrical. And in order to, um, in order to say to the manufacturer, this part here is not cylindrical, it's typical practice to do an X. I do have a reference to the Australian standard somewhere in my notes on Google Classroom where I talk about that. The next thing we want to talk about is we've got some um, stiffness and we've got some holes that are PCV. So um, that's, that's something to consider. So we've got five holes in PCV and we've got three webs equally, equally spaced around the, um, I don't know what we're calling this object, but actually got the drive mechanism. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not sure what we're gonna call the main thing that we're drawing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this at 15 millimeters wide. So for me, it's the same way. That yeah, okay. So this object is right. Okay, how far down does it go? Well, it's saying that the there's a radius of seventy five. So my scale twenty five to one seventy five. Um, ah, oh, that's thirty two. Just a new piece of paper. Ah, uh, that's what I was using with my piece of paper. Okay. I think it comes to that. I don't have a ruler to draw this to scale. It should be fairly easy for you to do that. Um, okay. So this object here is going to continue into the distance. So we're going to draw a break line. The break line tells us this object continues. Again, I have a thing just talking about break lines in Google Classroom. So the next thing we're going to have is we're going to have this insert here, which is 33. So I'm halving that as 150. This to there. Um, so have a, how wide is this thing? The thickness of it? It's 25. It's 10 mil. So it's divided 5 mil each side. And then it goes down to presumably three mil for the rest of it. So how, what's the width of that two? So for me it's 10. We've got that, that material there. Now it's gonna be a different material to everything else. So I need to section that differently. And then I have my three stiffness. Now, so we're gonna come back to PCD. So PCD is the concept that when we're showing a half sectional view or a, um, a full sectional view, which is what they've asked for here, a full sectional view, is that stiffness and holes that are drilled in PCD, we should rotate them so that they're in the cutting plane. I've explained this in a lot of detail in class, um, typically, so I mean, I don't know the you you're watching this, but the idea is that because they're equally spaced, we're going to rotate it. So even though there's three webs, we're going to show it as though there's two symmetrical webs. And they're 45 degrees. I'm going to say they're 45 degrees. And that's all part of the same material. Uh, but there's stiffness, so we don't section stiffness. Um, that is another thing we're going to talk about. Okay, and then lastly we have the radius of our... We have five times um, equispaced... And what are they? So the 10 mil, the 10 mil diameter. So let's. What is the spacing of them? 
the radius is, this isn't printed out properly, I have to assume it's 60. I'm guessing that all of those commas are actually 60s. Anyway, it'll do. Um, sometimes PDFs do that. Uh, okay, so 60 is the radius. So maybe that's fine, maybe half. So that's there. So that's where my center line is going to be. Yeah, I guess. Um, maybe it should be a little bit more space. 60 is about where I've got it here. That looks better. It might have been in the middle. It might just be that my dimensions are out by a little bit. Um, okay, so the hole is 10 mil all the way through. So for me, that's right. All the way through. And then we've got a countersink, which is 90 degrees, and it's going to be 16 degrees at its maximum. So effectively like that, that's 90 degrees. That's what it's talking about when it says 90 degrees. So we're just gonna show that as a, okay. Now, I actually thought that I printed out, I did print out, I uh, didn't print out the answers. That would have been smart. Okay. So, I've got a general shape of what we're doing now. Um, let's... chiseled uh, whiteboard marker which I've put down somewhere it was under my paper uh, under my paper okay so let's start phoning this in I'm not I'm just gonna leave the green stuff because the green was already provided for us Keep in mind that we only have about 10 minutes to do this whole thing. And here I am, letting perfect be the enemy of good. When you're under exam conditions and you make a mistake, you've got to think about how much time you have to spend on each question. Uh, yes, we can do that. That's fine. still two different objects. Oh, that was given. Yeah. Uh, we're going to keep that because even though it's given, the gear is important. Now, what I'm doing is I'm thinking about this, and without having looked at the answers, it means getting a more honest sense, there would be a line that is visible where that change has happened, I'm pretty confident, but we can draw that as a thin dark line. 45 degree line, 45 degree line. So the idea is that this is 10 and that's 16. I think that looks about right. Again, I'm not using a ruler. Bit of a cop out, but it is true. So, um, I would draw this break line as a thin light line. Thin light line. Center lines are thin light lines. Uh, thin dark lines, sorry. 
only the construction lines are light. Um, okay, and then we're going to do hatching. Now, I used this method in a previous video that I just recorded where I said if you're hatching, um, I use the set squares, I use the, the millimeter markings on the set squares. But for us, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the thickness of this web. Now, this might be a little too thin, so I'm just going to double it. It might be a little too thin. Um, now, the rest of this material is going the other direction, so we're going to be going Now, they don't, um, I don't believe that the HSE markers care that much about line thicknesses as much as they used to. My mentor, when I first started, he led me to believe that line thickness was absolutely something that would lose your marks. But I don't think that has proven to be true. Technically, I would even go like this and get my spacing right. If I was doing this for reals and not under exam conditions. Now, um, let's say that I am running out of time. This actually doing double spacing is good because it's gonna differentiate. But what I can do alternatively to show that this is a third, um, a third object, it doesn't mean it's a third material, it just means it's a third object, is I can um, change the angle. And I was gonna try and just do this like quick and nasty with freehand, but. Oops, I sectioned the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, we said thin line, and it can compound if I'm wrong, I'm gonna be really wrong. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with it. It's really important that I don't section the webs. I don't section these webs, that's really important. Um, the HSC does, sorry, the Australian Stand, the S1100 says that we can do our spacing at half the spacing we would normally use. But I'm gonna say that in the HSC, just don't do it. Um, so that's the answer I would give. I, I haven't looked at, an an, uh, at the answer to, or I don't have an answer printed out. I guess I could get it on my You might wanna hit the skip button while I look this up on my laptop. Twenty four D A B C Um Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with everything there. It turns out that this distance was shorter. Again, I wasn't using rulers, so I really apologize for that. But um yeah, this object is down lower. Um for the sake of making it look right. This part goes down further here. Something. Yeah, that's it, about that. Okay. Um, so, this is the teeth of the gear, and this inside part here, I'm not sure why that's shown as a different size. Um, I guess that's because there's an opening in that space. Um, and this is what's holding in place. So there's, there's just nothing there. There's just a gap. Um, whereas that's the gap of where the, the teeth are. This bolt is what's holding the thing together, the drive mechanism together to the bolt, uh, to the gear. Uh, we talked about how we've got three different kinds of sectioning or three different hatches. Um, so we've got this at 60 degrees, more or less. We've got this at 45 degrees, and we've got this at 45 degrees the other way in double spacing. We've moved, we, we're only showing two webs, even though there's three, we're showing them as symmetrical. We move them in to line with the, the section. 
The same way that we have five holes, but we're going to show them as two and we're going to show them as symmetrical. That's what we do when we have um, equal spacing or PCD. Um, we do show these thin lines here because we can see a change in diameter and that will be visible. And um, because I'm going to take a photo of this in a second, I will clean this up. Okay. Um, hopefully that process um, has been helpful.